In this video, I'm going to be talking about the 20 gallon aquarium and the updates that I did to it and the filter. That's coming up next, so stay tuned. The first thing I decided to do was replace the ADA pump, which is on top, with the new F zone pump on the bottom. Now the ADA pump on top only pumps 80 gallons an hour and has a six foot head and yet the bottom pump, the F zone pump, pumps 800 gallons an hour at 10 foot head. So there's a big difference in the two outputs of the pump. I decided to do this, not that anything was wrong with the ADA pump, but to try to see if anything does happen to the pump, the ADA pump, the Awaki pump, uh, how easy is it to replace it with a substitute pump? And on the other hand, is it worth the money to pay all that money for an ADA pump canister filter with a pump that only pumps out 80 gallons an hour? It's a hotter pump and doesn't pump very fast. And it's a very large canister. And I like to turn my water over quite a lot. So me buying the Epsom pump, which is uh, about 60 bucks, is pretty cheap and puts out 800 gallons an hour at 10 foot head. So let's see what happens to the modification. So when you open up the box to the F-Zone 800 gallon an hour pump, you will see it's a DC pump, variable control. It's the same pump that is on the 48 gallon breeder aquarium. And as you can see here, this is the pump housing and it's pretty uh, invasive, if you must say, for the impeller on it. This is the sum of parts you get. You get a, they give you plenty of parts for five eighths and one inch tubing for the 800 gallon hour pump. Now, after I took the motor off of the ADA canister filter, which is a big canister filter, all I did was add that 3M tape, the same 3M tape I use for the extensions for the fluvo lighting that I show in one of my videos. And it's pretty strong tape. And this is it. It was quite easy to modify, quite easy to set up, use the same rubber uh, hose to hook the pump up to and that's it. It was quite easy and very very simple. Next step will be to connect the plastic hose to it that uh, is the same hose as that came with the ADA aquarium. Okay so this is not a bigger diameter this is only half inch OD in diameter, the hoses that came with the ADA, that came with that smaller pump. I'm using the same tubing because I didn't have any 5H tubing to change it with, but that's for in the future. Anyhow, now I'm going to show you the canister filter, how I set up a canister filter, and then we'll get into showing you the fish tank. Okay, here's a picture of the BCB basket I pulled out of the ADA filter on the 20 gallon aquarium. All I do is just rinse it a little bit, that's it. I do not open it up, I leave it alone. You do not touch this, you will not have to ever touch this for maybe the next 30 years, and that is where all your bacteria and all the magic happens is inside that basket. So all you do is pull the basket out of the canister filter, and set it off to the side, maybe rinse it off a little bit, and leave it alone from there. You will not have to go any further with the BCB basket. Here's the ADA canister filter completely empty. Now I just want to tell everybody, everything that was in this canister filter was taken out and cleaned, or if it was something that is disposable, a throwaway, it was thrown away and brand new 
was replaced in it. So the first thing you do is put the screen back that goes on the bottom that lifts up the filter material off the bottom and that then will have a sponge. The blue sponge is out of a Eheim, I think a Echo Complete if I remember and it fits perfect inside this particular canister filter. This has been completely cleaned with a garden hose and I just want to tell you that some people will take a sponge let's say and clean it in aquarium water. Nothing that I took out of this canister filter was cleaned in aquarium water. It was all taken outside and cleaned with a garden hose so all the dirt and muck could be washed out of it. Okay this was not I repeat, not cleaned in a bucket full of aquarium water. After adding the sponge, I add two of these phosphate guard pads. This is to help reduce phosphates inside the aquarium. Remember, phosphates are going to cause you all the problems of algae. So here they are. I put two pads, one on top of the other. These sit right on top of the blue sponge that's on the bottom of them. So your first primary defense of cleaning the water is a sponge and then the water will have to go through these two phosphate pads. This is a metal piece that a friend of mine cut out at a tool and die shop from a lasered out stainless steel piece. This sits on top of the two pads. You can use anything you want. I just had this. So what this is for is so the BCB basket will set on top of this and not just sitting on top of the two phosphate pads. And here's the BCB basket placed back into the canister filters. Remember, this has not been cleaned. I just rinsed it off a little bit with some a spray water from the nozzle and uh, just to clean off anything that maybe was on it and that's it. You leave it alone. Everything you need is in that basket and while you're cleaning it you're not going to kill off a lot of the bacteria because you never have to touch it. And I will repeat this. I've had baskets like this last for over 30 years and never had to be touched and ever had to be cleaned or taken apart. Okay, once the BCB is in place, I put a little bit of filter floss at four points in the basket. This is only to help stabilize the basket. Those pieces of floss are a little too big. They could have been smaller, but that's what I had. Next, I use some of that craft screen. I've explained that in other videos. This is the round stuff. I just cut it to the right diameter of the ID of the ADA canister filter. And this is now getting ready so we can start putting in the carbon. This is just a piece of carbon mat that has been placed in the canister filter. You can buy these mats at Pet Smart, Pet Co. They're very stiff, very dense. They have carbon impregnated in them, and you can use them over and over again. This one's been cleaned out. It's been used over and over again. Now, here is the uh, poly material that I buy at one of the craft store. I cut it to fit inside the canister filter. This will be my polishing filter. Once that is together, I push the stiff carbon mat into the canister filter and I make it just a little larger than the ID so it is very stiff and snug in there because the carbon is going to go on top of this. Here's the carbon you're looking at it. Remember I did a video on how to make a poor man's Dick Boyd's. This is it. Pour the carbon in there, mix it up with some resin, uh, so it will do everything that Dick Boyd's does. There's probably equal to two, two and a half bags of Dick Boyd's that you're looking at, but it's not in a bag. I just leave it on top, as you can see, without a bag. Then I top it off with another piece of the craft screen. 
Like I said, this is the round craft screen. All you do is cut it to size so it fits snug. I put it in there. And then on top of this, I will add the poly pad. Okay, this is the stuff that you buy from like Joanne's Fabrics or something. I think they make like pillows or something out of it. It's an inch thick. It's very dense. So this is going to be your polishing pad. This is what, what will polish the aquarium water before it enters back into the aquarium. And here it is all stuffed in there. As you can see, it's tightly stuffed in there. So no water can bypass it and be channeled to the least resistant spot. This is the screen that goes on top of everything before the lid goes on. This is to make sure that the water doesn't channel into one little spot of the intake hole that's going to be on the top. Okay, so you add a screen like this to prevent that. Okay, this is the O-ring. It's a real nice hefty O-ring that goes on top. Remember, this canister filter is big as, big as a 2217 Eheim to give you some size of how big it is. Of course, there's your screen, and the next step will be to put the lid on and seal everything up. Now, everything's pretty compact in there and tight, so you won't have to worry about anything moving around. So there it is with the lid on. I always write the date on of when I had changed the filter. And it's easy to take this uh, date off. You can use a magic uh, marker, write it on there. And then you can use alcohol just to remove it and rewrite the new date of when you change your filter. Works out pretty nice. So with all this work of putting everything together, does the pump excel over the very expensive Awaki pump that probably costs three times more than the F-Zone pump? And the answer to that is definitely. That pump pumps up a lot. Now, <clears throat> because we're only using half-inch hosing instead of five-eighths, you're not going to get quite the output as if you're using the same pump like I use on the 48-gallon goldfish tank of uh, putting out over 400 plus gallons an hour because this is the smaller tubing smaller outlets you are going to have a reduction but even though you're going to have a reduction things I have noticed is that the pump runs a lot cooler than the Awaki it is dead silent compared to the Awaki so in another words what I guess I'm saying is instead of buying the very expensive ADA canister filter you just might as well buy the F-Zone canister filter and just buy the F-Zone pump, right? Does it make any sense? Even if you have a 20-gallon aquarium, you can always turn, if there's too much output, you can always turn the pump down. Okay, because here's a case where I change the pump and everything, and it still pumps out more than what the Awaki pump does for this 20-gallon without blowing the fish around. So, definitely is a vast improvement okay so what i'm showing you here is the 20 gallon tank and i want you to look at it and if you remember i had the uh, uh parrot fish in here i gave the parrot fish to petco oh, what happened is i had three parrot fish one of the parrot fish got beaten up it was a male and after spawning the female was beating it up because i guess it was sterile and uh i had to give it back to Petco. Well, the two females that were in there, parrotfish, if you remember through other videos, they kept fighting and fighting and fighting. My wife even said, hey, the, these fish are constantly fighting and picking on each other. I said, yeah, they need to go in a tank with other cichlids. So finally, I bit the bullet, took them out of this aquarium, and um, I decided that uh, put the goldfish in here. The two goldfish that you see in here are a male and female, Ryunkin. And, of course, the pair of fish I took to Petco so they can get go to a nice home with a person who has cichlids. So their aggression then can be carried out with other cichlids and not on each other. Okay, so now I have two goldfish in here. Now, for you goldfish lovers, 
This is perfect. You got a 20 gallon tank. You have two goldfish. The bodies are about three inches without tail. So they're not small goldfish and they're not cheap goldfish at that size. And they're nice and fat. The orange one you're looking at there is a female. The calico is the male. And they've, uh, they try to spawn constantly. Now, look at the tank. What's missing? Well, all you see in the tank is you could see the output tube, which is a lily pipe. You see the inlet. Uh, I'll try to move things around so you can see inlet, inlet better. And on the right-hand side is the surface skimmer. Now, if you buy, let's say I'm just giving you an example, an F-Zone pump and everything, you would get a inlet with, which would have a surface skimmer built onto the inlet pipe. But uh, because these are the old ADA pipes, lily pipes and inlet pipe, uh, I just use them with only the half inch tubing. So this is not 5 h tubing, this is half inch. So of course that's going to cut back considerably on the amount of output, but it is far, far better than what the 80 gallons an hour uh, Awaki pump put out. I don't even think it was putting out more than 40 or 50 gallons an hour into the 20 gallon aquarium. But as you can see, the goldfish is not blowing them around. Now, I'll sprinkle some black gravel or sand at the bottom of this aquarium just for cosmetics. But as you can see, this is a bare bottom aquarium. But if you notice what's missing out of this aquarium that you see on YouTube a lot, one, it doesn't have sponge filters. And two, it doesn't have a hang on the back filter. This whole aquarium is depending on the BCB basket inside of a canister filter. Now, I just have cleaned the canister filter, which I've shown you uh, ahead of time. And after I cleaned it, this is two days later, the tank is crystal clear. No stress to the goldfish. No stress to the parrotfish when I changed it. No stress to these goldfish. They don't even know the canister filter was even clean. Uh, no ammonia, no nitrites, no nitrates right now. Well, of course, because I just cleaned the filter. But what I'm trying to show you here is this is the Harnworth. Uh, I got this out of the breeder tank of goldfish. And the fish don't even know the canister filter was ever clean because the BCB basket still contains all the bacteria that these fish need. Now, the tank turned cloudy, not real cloudy, but it, you can tell it was murky for two days. Today, it cleared up. It doesn't look very clear right now because it's in the sun, and I just fooled around with the plants and stirred up some of the detritus and stuff that was on the plants, but it's crystal clear now. So within 48 hours, the tank cleared up. The fish showed zero stress. They didn't even know the canister was clean. Now, if you think about this, if you have a 20-gallon tank and you don't want to be buying like two sponge filters because you're going to need two because if you clean your sponge filter, you just destroyed all your biological filter. So you're going to need two. So you clean one sponge filter and leave the other one dirty. Okay, that's in your tank taking up room. The only thing that's taking up room besides the little pipes, and I'll move this out of your way so you can see, that's it. You have those two little pipes in your aquarium. No sponges, no bubblers, no noise, no cleaning out sponge filters, putting bags around them so they don't leak garbage all over your aquarium. That's it. Two pipes in your aquarium, 20-gallon tank, very neat, clean, easy. How often do you have to change the canister filter with the BCB in it? Once every four to six months. Not like a sponge filter. Four to six months. That's it. You still do your water changes once a week. A little bit of, give them a little bit of nice clean water. Uh, look at how the plant's growing. Like this tank is right in the window. So it gets direct sunlight. And look at it. The two fish are doing great. The tank's doing great. The canister filter was completely emptied and everything in it was completely cleaned. 
not cleaned in aquarium water, just clean. So like the sponge, if you would have probably cleaned that in aquarium water, it would have kept a lot of the bacteria. But I wanted to show everybody that you can take your canister filter, clean it down, completely clean it down to ster sterile, like it's a brand new canister. Leave the BCB basket alone. Don't touch it. That is all your bacteria, and that is all that is needed for this entire aquarium. Okay? These fish eat constantly. Everybody knows goldfish eat constantly. I feed them twice a day. They're munching on the plants. They, uh, they, oh, that's all goldfish do is they eat and poop, eat and poop. That's all goldfish do. And look at the male constantly ch chasing the female. And this is two days after I clean the canister and completely cleaned it. So for those of you who are thinking you want to start a little 20 gallon tank or something like that, you don't want all these sponge filters in it. You don't want to hang on the back filter. All this stuff cosmetically doesn't look appealing. You'd rather have a tank that doesn't have all that garbage in it. Make one like this. But remember, when you set everything up with your canister filter, you make a BCB basket, let it run for at least four to six months before you clean it. That way you give the BCB basket plenty of time to do its thing, to, to develop bacteria in it. And then after that, you're good to go for the next 30 years. And this is the only way I have found out that I could keep goldfish alive, healthy, is by using either a BCB basket, which is right here. You could see that's all that's in there. There's no gravel, nothing. There's no sponge filters, no hang on the back. The BCB basket is handling everything like a charm. And like I said, there was a little cloudiness after two days, you could probably get rid of the cloudiness if you used a product like the ADI or Fritz and add a couple capfuls of bacteria starter in your aquarium. And that probably would have done away with the little bit of cloudiness that happened in the aquarium. But other than that, and I'm being honest with you, other than that, nothing. The fish, it, they didn't mind the little bit of cloudiness. And if it was... Well, usually that's a bacteria bloom, but the bloom's gone now. And the tank is just, just wonderfully crystal clear. And I wanted to show you this because if you're thinking of goldfish, this is one way of having it. This is the only way I have been able to keep goldfish alive for years. And when I say years, I'm talking 15 plus years. Otherwise, I could not. And I'm going to be showing you in my next videos and everything that like the 40 gallon breeder, which is actually 48 gallons. I'm going to show you that aquarium. I'm going to show you I got two new goldfish for it. Yes, I know that aquarium is overstocked, but I'm purposely, purposely overstocking that 48 gallon to show everybody how powerful the plenum is and how powerful the BCB baskets are that are inside that F-Zone filter. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, and I hate saying this, but if I had a choice between the F-Zone filter, even with it not being the same quality as an ADA, I'd rather get the F-Zone filter because you have options of different pumps. And I will show you uh, that I have changed the pump to the 90-gallon, with an F-Zone 6,000 liter per hour pump. And that pump runs quieter. You don't even know it's running. Uh, it doesn't put out the heat or the noise. And it outperforms the Awaki pump that's on the 90 gallon. The Awaki pump is rated at 475 gallons at 15 feet ahead. And the uh, F-Zone 6,000 liter per hour pump is rated, I think, at 12 or 13 foot head at 1,500 gallons an hour. So I'm pumping more water in the 90 gallon with the F zone pump, and I'll show you a video on that, than I was with the Awaki pump. So, in one way, why buy the ADA? Because the F zone pumps are guaranteed for three years. And that F-Zone pump, the 6,000 liter per hour, I think it's like 
90 some dollars. The Awaki pump that was on there, which I still have, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I think I looked at ADA's website. It's almost like a five or $600 pump. Way, way too expensive. You know, uh, that's what I wanted to show you this for. If you're going to get a canister filter, and that is one thing you want to do, people, you want to move water through your canister filter. You want to get water from point A to point B. And let's face facts. If you could set up a tank like this and know that you don't have to clean the filter out for the next, let's say, four to six months, what's, it's a no-brainer. Why would I put sponge filters in there taking up room, making all kinds of bubbling noise? Why would I put a hang on the back there when for the price of a canister filter and put a BCB in, I can have a tank like this with almost zero maintenance. Do a little bit of water change and maybe every six months have to uh, go in and clean the canister twice a year? Give me a break. That's it. And, and your aquarium will do just fine. Like I said, d depending on how much you feed, I feed twice a day, plus I eat the plants. We all know goldfish love to eat. I always like to keep live plants with my goldfish so they can nibble on them. Any algae that grows on them, they'll nibble it off. But uh, this is very, very typical. And I'm being honest with you. This is the only way, the only way I could keep goldfish alive for years and years and years and years and healthy. So... In my next video, I'm going to show you how powerful a BCB is and a plenum is with goldfish. And we all know goldfish are super messy. They, they All they do is eat and poop, eat and poop. That's, that's it. That's all they do. And, and try to spawn, of course. But basically, they're just eating machines that create a lot of waste, especially if you provide any algae or plant matter to them. That's all they do. And the anoxic filter... It was the only filter that I've ever had in my life that did everything it's supposed to do and keep your fish healthy for years and years and years. So I wanted to get this video out because a lot of people are going to be thinking about setting up aquariums, maybe during the Christmas holidays, whatever, throughout the world, and try it. And the only thing, the big expense is, yes, I understand sponge filters are cheap. I understand that air pump's cheap, airline's cheap, a check valve's cheap. I understand a hang on the back filter is cheap. I understand that. But with just a little bit of forethought and a little bit of thinking out of the box, maybe you'll have to spend a little more money on your filtration, okay? You'll have less work, less hassle, and hopefully if I've told you my stories over and over again, like the young lady who had a goldfish channel who used to use sponge filters and everything. She was not successful. She was not successful. Okay? I have been successful with a BCB basket. This is a big filter. You saw the, my video right now, how I pack it. It's pretty well packed, and it's going to keep your water crystal clear, and you want to move water in your aquarium for goldfish. So, I hope this kind of shows you something. I mean, it's your choice, but at least, at least I got to say, uh, you do have choices. And if I had a choice between, let's say, every four to six months cleaning a filter out and not have to worry that after I clean it, oh my God, I got no bacteria. Oh, I just destroyed everything. Well, here's proof in the pudding and this video that even without gravel, all oh, there is some plants in there, even without gravel or anything, the fish are doing fine. In fact, you've seen them. They're chasing each other. They want to spawn again. They're doing fine because the BCB basket contains everything that is needed for bacteria-wise for your aquarium. And since it never clogs, you never have to clean it. And that's great, isn't it? At least I would think that's great. So with a little bit of forth thought and maybe a little bit more outlay than you want, you can have a very easy to take care of aquarium compared to one with sponges and hang on the back filter. 
If you are starting out this, let's say with a canister filter, having a goldfish tank, I would highly recommend that you put in some Fritzine or some API uh, bacteria culture starter. Okay, and that will get inside and that will acclimate your aquarium instantly with your canister filter. That's the only recommend recommendation I would say at least for the first time. If you clean your canister and wanted to add a little capful or two after cleaning it, that would be up to you. But I did not do it. The aquarium got a little foggy, not bad, but after two days it cleared up. So anyhow, that's this video. I hoped you enjoyed it. I hoped you learned something. We'll keep an eye on the 20 gallon. Uh, I hated to get rid of the parrotfish, but they really need to be with other cichlids. They're big enough now where uh, they need to go in a cichlid aquarium so they can have their aggression put on the other fish and not themselves constantly fighting. But for you goldfish lovers, this is right up your alley. This is it. This is, this is the perfect 20 gallon aquarium with almost zero maintenance. Until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you very much for watching. And please click the like button and subscribe to my channel so I can keep bringing out these videos to you. Until next time, bye-bye.